Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. We are going to be working with the Summer Adventure Collection from Echo Park. It's another camping outdoor themed pack. Um, we're also going to be using the decorative brads along with the enamel dots, the frames and tags die cuts, and both sets of chipboards, the chipboard phrases and the chipboard accents. Um, and we're going to be using this along with the 12 by 12 collection kit, which has the 12 pattern papers along with a sticker sheet. There is, I did buy a lot of embellishments this time. I do plan on doing a new, a brand new six page workshop or cutting guide. Um, so we're going to be making six pages um, today. So we're going to need um, eight pattern papers plus six sheets of cardstock. So as you can see there, all the pattern papers in this collection are very nice. Um, and it includes uh, three papers um, where one side of them is uh, journaling cards. So for the cardstock today, I used from the summer collection from Echo Park, I used two sheets of the green orange which I'm not sure which side I'm going to use yet, and then two sheets of the teal and brown, and then two sheets from Stamping Up called Soft Suede, which is just kind of like a medium brown kind of a color. Okay, so those are my card stocks that I'm going to be using today. I'm not sure if I'm using orange or green, so I'm going to leave the one, or one page flipped over just to see how my papers look with them. Um, I like this canoe side a little bit better. It has the wood grain in the back. Um, my journaling cards, I'm putting them to the side and I'm only going to use them if I have to. I also like that um, tent paper. I'm going to use that as a background as well. Um, I'm not sure about that back uh, about the backpack paper yet. The star, those stars constellation paper, I'm going to use that as a background. I love this word one. I think it incorporates all the colors in the kit and I'm going to use that as my accent paper one of my accent papers i need two accent papers and six background papers um this page i'm not too sure about either i th this back side of this paper here is very generic so i'm not sure what i'm doing with that paper yet this fish paper i love it and i also love the orange on the back side i think the orange stands out against every other paper in this collection so i think i'm going to um Put that aside and use that orange as an accent paper because I think it'll really pop on all of the pages and this last page here I don't really love the front side of this I think that um, the front is very symmetrical and very linear and um, I don't like that there's words on it I think they compete with my accent paper and the back side of it is this beautiful wood grain and I love wood grain paper and I think it's so versatile to use for anything. So if my spare paper is going to be wood grain, couldn't ask for better. Okay, so here, um, this is what's left for my background pages. I decided to flip that, um, that paper over with the backpacks over and use the solid green side. Um, I just wanted to incorporate that green color in this collection as well so those are my background papers and we're going to go ahead and get started with the cutting guide we have cutting diagrams in my tutorial videos and i just kind of want to let you know how to read them so there's the number and top in inches and that's going to be the size that we're going to cut that cut piece into and there's a number below it in a circle so a lot of the times we're making four pages or six pages um, when we're using these cutting diagrams and all these cut pieces can sort of get very disorganized so that number inside of the circle there represents a pile that you're going to put that cut piece into so for pa for a four page tutorial we're going to make four piles and for a six page tutorial we're going to make six piles um, so the numbers are going to be either one through four or one through six so page one is going to have all the cut pieces that have a circle with the number one inside and so on and so on for the four or six pages. So now we're going to go ahead and take all pieces of our cardstock and we are going to cut one inch in, one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom. And we're going to make a straight line on all four sides of, of each of these pieces of cardstock. 
What we're basically doing is cutting a 10 by 10 inch square out of the center of this piece of cardstock. The border is going to be put into our pile and the center, the 10 by 10 inch center is going to be put to the side and we're going to be cutting it with another cutting diagram as soon as we're done cutting out all of these squares. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the backgrounds for our pages. So we are going to be cutting the barcode strip off along with half an inch and then half an inch on the other side. So we're going to be making an 11.5 inch by 11.5 inch uh, square for all of our background papers.
So now we're gonna go ahead and get started with our embellishments. I have the sticker sheet here along with our journaling cards I'm gonna cut up so we can possibly use them on our pages. Um, I like to take the die cuts here and spread them out so we can see colors and sizes. Um, you can also be um, separate the frames from the middles which have a quote usually. Um, I ended up buying a lot of chipboard this time, like I bought both the phrases and the accents. So you get a lot of repeats, like you'll notice on the sticker sheet there's um, a sticker that says camping and it says explore, but the chipboard also says camping and explore, the same titling, the same font. Sometimes though you'll have them in different sizes. And here I'm just, we're going to be using scissors today and um, foam tape and foam squares to pop up stuff. And um, so something I like, like when you have too, too much chipboard, like I find that you need to mix chipboard with other styles of embellishment. So it works with the die cuts, it works with the stickers. Um, the enamel dots, things like that. But when you try and put, like here before, I had that explore word in chipboard and then the great outdoors was also chipboard and it just didn't look as good when you put the two chipboards together. So I actually swapped out that explore chipboard title for the explore title sticker because then I stuck that sticker directly onto the page and the great outdoors chipboard was actually, it actually stood out a little bit more because there was a height difference between the flat sticker and the raised chipboard. So something I like to do is not mix my chipboard up um, and use chipboard exclusively. So by recessing or having that flat explore sticker, I was able to use like chipboard around it. So that tent and that, that, that curved title that says new friends and then the bottom that says the great outdoors, that's all chipboard along with those stars. Um, but it created some dimension on the page by everything not being the same height, if that makes sense. And you know, even sometimes when you pop up with foam tape, like a sticker beside a chipboard, just having it hollow underneath and creating that shadow makes it look different even though it's the same height as the chipboard so um here i'm just making a cluster at the bottom of this three by four photo area with a lantern and a saying that says outdoor fun that i popped up and the owl is from the decorative brads like those little icons at the bottom and then i finished it off with an arrow and um a brad that says happy camper Okay, and then over here on this other side of this popped up summer adventure titling, I just put a chipboard that says nature and finished it off with some enamel dots in a triangle shape. Okay, so I, I struggled a lot with this collection and not because of the collection. I think I just struggled because they were new pages to me. This is the first time I've done these pages. Um, and mentally like I've had a such a busy week and I still have so many things to do that I'm just like my head wasn't in it like my head was not I, I felt like I really couldn't focus on what I was doing so like I have deleted like in editing for this video I have deleted so much footage of me changing my mind of me swapping things out and um, the video would have been probably over an hour long if I left everything in there, even sped up. So I actually did sort of, I really had to work through everything and there's actually, a, at the end of this video, I go back to this page because I wasn't happy with this page and how I left it. Um, so at the end, I show you how I fix it. So um, I really thought about just deleting it and deleting this section of the video, not showing you this part since I didn't really keep everything that I did here on this page right now. But I, I kind of thought it would be a good opportunity to show you, um, to show you my struggle on this page, and show you kind of how I fixed it, and show you like a before and after 
of this page and, and how I ended up doing that. And you know, if you guys, like I know that the concept of my cutting guides is to bring your pages to a point where, um, you know, where you, where you, if even if you're not in a creative mood, you can you can sort of create the base of your page. But when you've got to embellish your pages, even though you have your pictures and you know what you want the vibe of your page to be, sometimes things just don't work out. Things just, you know, when you look at your page, it's like there's just something about it that just doesn't look right. And that happened for me this week. And not because of the pages and not because of the collection, because the collection is beautiful. And I really, really like it. And I like the, um, I like the flow of the pages and I like this new cutting guide, but sometimes you're just not mentally there. And I think if you do struggle with that, sometimes I found the best thing to do is to just leave it alone. Just walk away from it. Cause I, you know, even later that night, or the next day, it's going to come to you and it'll work out. Or you'll look at the page that you hated yesterday and look at it the next day and you'll be like, actually, it's not that bad. So here on this page, um, I decided to use the chipboard backpack on top of the chip on top of the backpack image just to create some dimension on that journaling card. And then I put, um, you'll notice that I, on that little, uh, like those that stick with the marshmallows and stick with the hot dog. I did pop up just the top of that stick with the um, with the marshmallows just so that it would stand up on top of the stick with the hot dog. Okay, so here um, on this page, I wrote I put that camp. I never did any anything on these pages that said summer camp because my kids don't go to summer camp. Um, we do go camping, so I thought camp would still work, And um, but my kids don't go to summer camp. They're too scared to go away from home, and, and we're, we're so busy that um, they don't really have time for to go to camp anyways in the summers. And here, I'm just going to kind of fill up that bottom corner space with a cluster. Um, I kind of wanted this page to be about... Um, just like normal camp life, you know, a lantern, um, some cooking stuff, um, like that stick with the hot dog on it, sitting, kind of like a sitting around the campfire kind of a vibe, even though I didn't really put a picture of the actual campfire on this page. And like with the night, was sort of with the stars in the background, it just reminds me of like a camping evening, I guess. Um, and here I just cut out th this um, titling here that says camping. I don't use it on this page, but I do use it on another page and I actually cut it again. I cut those red banners off of it and just use the orange camping title. So this was the easiest page to do. I just love the balance of this page. I think it naturally sort of, I mean, you don't even need to do much to it because it just, the flow of the page just works really well on this layout. Um, this was the easiest page to do by far and I just tried to incorporate the circles in a triangle there um, on the to sort of balance out the page but yet cluster around the picture areas this is like the only page too in this cutting guide that uses a three by four photo three by five photo area instead of a four by six photo area and I think I might actually do more layouts with three by five photo sizes I think they lend a great balance to a page. Okay, so I've been I've been seeing sort of linear layouts like this and I wanted to give one a try. So it's definitely different for me. I like to usually cluster things and sort of um I don't usually try to make like lines like that on my page, but I decided to try this layout. Um I I would have, in a perfect world, picked probably a different background for this page. Something not so... Something a little bit more busy, I guess. That's just my style, but I think it still works out okay. And I do kind of change things around on this page as well. Um, I end up changing the titling, and I think it just looks too busy on top of that background. 
um, paper with the words on it. So I end up moving everything upwards so that it's against the flatter background. Uh, the, like the background that doesn't have as much going on onto it. And I ended up moving lots of stuff around because I felt like those elements were sort of floating on the page on their own. And I ended up just kind of moving some of the elements towards that top of that 4x6 photo area and beside that one 3x4 photo area that doesn't have a mat on it. Okay, so that teepee um, tent, I, I actually, what I did is I tucked it in behind the, the fire, like the, um, like the bonfire, but what I did is I popped up the top of it. So the, the so it's behind, it's stuck behind the chipboard fire, but the top of it is popped up. So it just creates a shadow on the page and has a little bit more dimension to it. Uh, with my enamel dots, I also just made them in a straight line at the bottom of that three by four photo area and they really pop off the page because the page, the background is so, um, it's not busy. So it's, it was easy to work with that way. And then that yellow summer banner, I thought it really stood out against the background as well. And I decided to do it, um, a sideways on the page. And, and I liked it there actually. So, um, this is kind of how I ended up leaving this page and it's different than what I'm used to, but it doesn't, I actually really, I actually really like it. So my only, my only critique with that page is I probably would have chosen a different background had I, um, had I had other choices. So we're going to go back to this page that I really hated um, and we're, I'm just going to show it to you beside a page that I really liked. Okay, so you'll notice that the page on the left, it has balance, it, it's, it has unity, like everything looks like it's working together. Um, the page just is more eye appealing, it has more balance. The page on the right, it just, it looks flatter, that doesn't look like it has as much dimension to the page, and everything looks very separate. And nothing's really working together, nothing's really making a statement, and there's nothing sort of balancing the page out with, the, with any of the elements or with the actual layout itself. So, like, I, I mean, it's not bad, but... I want to fix it. So I'm going to kind of show you guys how I'm going to switch things around and um, we'll do a side by side of what it looked like before and after and show you kind of how I fixed a page that that I struggled with. Okay, so first of all, I think what we're going to do is we're going to remove this yellow um, frame that we had used as a background behind that four by four photo area and move it down to the center or towards the center of the page and like at the bottom of this four by four photo area. I think that the, the center of this page is sort of gonna be what sort of ties stuff together because I think all three of those photos areas sort of touch the center of the page in a way. Um, so I moved that 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 those elements to the bottom of that uh, four by four photo area, and then now I'm just gonna kind of um, add. I removed that summer um, chipboard piece. I added this explore one, and then I and I clustered around it with two stickers that I ended up sticking directly to the page, so that that explore chipboard um, stood out behind in front of those elements and then I switched out what was a sticker um, compass with a chipboard compass so that it stood out beside that nature sticker which is now flat and then this keep calm and camp on title it's small enough and it's I like the color contrast and I put that in the center of everything because I think it touches enough things that it makes things look like they group together okay and then um, I felt like it needed a little bit more under that canoe, which is a very linear embellishment. I felt like we needed to add a little bit, so added one more thing underneath it just to help balance it out 
with the rest of the elements on top of the on top of it so um, that's how I fix this page I think it looks a lot better um, but that's just my personal that's just my like how I like to see my pages personally um, and then I felt at the top that those tags were kind of just all on their own and so what I did is since there was a, um, a br big brad there already I decided to kind of make a mini cluster and add another small teal colored um, brad along with one that says camp so just adding that little triangle there made it feel like it had a little bit more there's a little bit more to that element okay so thank you so much for watching this week um, we will see you next Friday with a new tutorial thank you so much for watching <laughs>